Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So Ed's put out a Terra Grants Foundation update and I think this one is more than needed currently because the TGF Foundation, it was all created back in November and it's the following year. We're now in the fourth month of the year and we're only yet to see funding simply go to a centralized route which is just to the l1 development team and for good example all of these little bugs that we're seeing with terra station even though we're paying one hundred forty thousand dollars a month uh sorry or quarterly uh, it still doesn't cover all the these little things all of the little bugs all of the actual things that you need sorting out to provide a good sustainable foundation platform for your user base um instead you're seeing more interest in reimbursing fees uh, from when the burn fees was slightly off. There's more interest in things like that than there is than actually pursuing things that need doing. And what I am starting to feel like is it's like people are doing what they want to do. It's like it's like being told to clean your room, right? And not wanting to do it. And then, I don't know, getting a new piece of furniture and thinking, I, I'm going to clean up. It will look nice. I'll have more room to do it's all when it benefits them, right? This is what's starting to become more and more apparent. And the community is kind of torn uh, on this. And I feel like this, the next payment that we've got to pay out, it's all being rushed. They're rushing it through. They've got the proposal up really quick. They've not allowed for much conversation to go back and forth. And then to top it all off, Zaradar has posted for whatever reason that, you know, until they get paid, their work's done, they'll be doing small maintenance things. And it's just like station is an absolute pigsty and nothing's being done about it. You know, it's not not my problem, not my job. I'll paint around it. It really is coming down to these silly little things like that. So I've gone through this uh, yesterday uh, during the evening and then I've also been going through it today. I've had a deep listen. There's a lot in here to absorb. There's a lot of good stuff, right? This all leads up to pretty much, just so I'm not leaving you hanging, this all leads up to a new payout system for the TGF and for it to happen twice a year. And they pretty much explained they had to postpone it because they had to focus on other things in hand. But we'll be going through it. But the, the key thing from this is it's positive because hopefully funding is going to get to where it needs to get to because we've got all of these different projects on chain that are simply just not getting the help that they need. Um, what was even more disheartening is seeing Tobias <clears throat> tweet out about a random game on the blockchain. I've never heard of this game. We've got three um, projects on chain that have been with us pretty much from the beginning now. Uh, four, sorry, well, I, I, I mean, there's like five from the beginning, but there's three that really do need some help. I'm saying this because I know how hard it is to be in that situation. They could definitely use the help. If there's funding available, they could definitely do with that. It's going to provide a sustainable future for our blockchain because those sort of projects don't just take liquidity um, and take everything off chain. And we'll be getting on to um, a little bit about that because loads of people are asking what Terraport is. And it's simply just a DEX. It's another place where you can trade coins, another place where you can stake coins, and another place where you can do loads of different things. And they've created their own coin. It's simply just taking liquidity, volume, user base, off station, and moving it to their own system. Now, Terraport has been created by Terra C Vita, who are also responsible for Terra Casino. That's another whole situation of just simply taking liquidity. Someone has to lose in that situation for somebody else to win. And it just kind of sucks when these systems are coming in so early, when it's so important and imperative for us to have projects that are not, not just going to take, 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 but give back, bring user base. The, the whole Terraport, Terra Casino, it's just a place for liquidity to go, users to go. As good as it is to see projects like that, yes, it's going to attribute some small amounts of volume, but ultimately the end goal is, is to take a user base from Station so they can move forward with their projects. So as you can see here, I've highlighted some stuff. Um, they launched this on the 22nd of November 
and then more or less they had to pause it and they can see here so thus TGF decided to pause the Terra Classic acknowledgement opportunity for a later time until one clarity could be obtained on the new L1 development team and two the chain was sufficiently capitalized to support this initiative. The chain is so sufficiently capitalized we're paying $140,000 out quarterly and bearing in mind every time we pay that that gets sold into fiat that attributes to price crush going downwards. <clears throat> and something to note during these downtrends right is that we are being affected by Bitcoin right it's how we recover kind of shows the health of the blockchain and how things are going and we're just not seeing that strong recovery rate that we saw before we all want to see this we all want to see LUNC move upwards uh comment section recently people saying you know you're fudding and all of these different things and it's simply me just presenting the facts if we can't be self-critical then we've lost all hope at that point if we can't question things and <clears throat> ask questions then honestly for me, hope is lost at that point. We have to be able to be self-critical in these situations to address issues in hand so we can correct them and move forward with a more streamlined system. So this whole situation with Binance is becoming precarious because I've spoken about this in previous videos, so I won't hash over it too much. But when you allow for whitelisting for just Binance, you're going to have to simply allow that for other projects that wish to be part of that whitelist. You cannot force everybody to remint their burns if you're not going to make Binance remint theirs. It's that simple. This is not a dictatorship. It's a decentralized blockchain. But the issue is, is we're seeing power centralized at the moment. So we're not dictating what we would like the, the L1 development team to do. They're simply dictating it back to us. But this is what we signed up for. This is what we're paying for. And I think something to note here is when I'm speaking about stuff like this, I was one of the very small amount of people that called out Terra Rebels BS. We voted no to that whole payout that ended up them getting money and then leading to this L1 development team. When the price of LUNC goes down, right, as a node operator, I'm heavily affected because we're paid in LUNC and USTC, meaning that our running cost, okay, we have to pay that in fiat. Normally, you have to pay it in fiat. They may take BTC, okay? So, how you got to think about it is, is if the LUNC is worth less, then that means we have to sell more of our commission to be able to pay the running cost. So this all has a grand effect on me. So the only reason I'm doing this is because there is issues that need to be addressed. So like I said, this is actually pushing forward. They want more funding. Um, I, I think it's around $5 million. It's, that's going to have to go into a specific video and it's to do with a small, smaller grants and loans to projects. Uh, loaning is, like I said, it needs a whole video on its own, rules, regulations that come into force with that loan sharking, all those different things. So the timeline, the Grants Foundation would run two cycles of funding in a year, as I stated at the beginning of the video. This is really good because hopefully you get a streamlined system. Now they figured it all out and they've got themselves in place. Because like I said, this is leading up to those payments that were supposed to be paid out way, way, way uh, before this uh, have just simply not been paid out because there's more interest in funding the L1 development team not worrying about all these other different projects and not worrying about current issues in hand. So like I was saying it's some sort of loan system they're working on which for me is yeah, I want to see stuff that's going to move the price upwards and going to push everything up good sentiment getting everybody vibrant, bringing in new users and looking really interesting from the outside once again. So their goal is to invest the resources at their disposal as wisely as they possibly can to incentivize projects back to chain. This is where I, I just struggle because currently, right, we're paying them $140,000 quarterly and they're not actually able to even help the three projects that re really need help. The likelihood, I know two of those projects have reached out um, during this and the likelihood is they've applied as well so this whole bring users to to these services projects games and utility it just seems like it's all on their terms and they'll take the credit when they're ready and they'll look like the good guys when really you've got people like myself building projects working bringing on all of these different projects and it's funny because one of the really funny things that hit me recently is 
I was the first person to call out Binance is burning. I figured out basically a puzzle that was thrown on the floor. I picked it up, put it back together and showed it to people. And there were so many people like, <laughs> yeah, crazy guy. And the end goal of that was what? Oh, right. Yeah. Binance ended up burning. There was a whole plan. And what I believe was, is that was like an accumulation phase for them. And then they have all of those tokens that they bought for just absolute peanuts and yeah, but we all know that Binance is burning. So realistically, if that's not a reason to subscribe to this channel, I don't know what is. People who got involved with LUNC back then would have made a 12x if you sold out at the correct point. So <clears throat> they are saying about the majority of the burns that are CEX related transactions and the key to profitability is to the increase in on-chain transactions. We've been screaming this out for time. Everybody knows that utility is what is going to drive this back upwards, bring users to the blockchain. This is why DEXs are highly questionable because they are built to serve themselves, right? It's all about building their ecosystem up, making branches of all these different places. When everybody forgets, that's what station is. When you start taking all of these different things off chain, creating your own little liquidity bubbles like that, okay, where you can stake coins. So it's the same with people who stake on Binance, doesn't attribute anything to the station blockchain, yet people like that are screaming for the price to go up, screaming for change and not actually knowing they're not attributing to any volume. So ultimately enabling the foundation to better serve the Terra Classic ecosystem. Really excited to see this happen. We need this. We need this more than ever. We need to stop seeing the centralized funding of simply an L1 development team. And I've spoken previously about bug bounties. I'm definitely going to do a video on that. I solely believe we're doing everything wrong. Now, something I've found very interesting in here is the depleting of the Oracle pool, which we'll get onto shortly, but also this accurate polling system for community sentiment. They've created a GIT hub repository for some kind of simple polling app. I believe this should be integrated into station. You ask why? I say it could work as simple as the voting system. It could attribute to so much more volume. And then that way, people who want to have a say and guide the sentiment of the community need to hold a bag instead of just allowing people to vote simply on GIT Hub. You could mold this in a very good way. We utilize the system like this ourselves way before we created our validator when we were testing out a voting system for our community to try and get it as balanced as we could and actually gauge accurate sentiment. So I think they should really stop taking things off chain it's like everything's going off chain and what we want and what we need is everything to be built on chain so one common statement that ed has heard in the lunc community and it's the same as everybody's heard this the oracle pool will run dry in the next two years nope and ed does explain this he gives you the exact line of code you would need to query the uh, swagger system with so Ed is right, but what everybody needs to remember is, okay, as the depletion goes down, the pool corrects itself, so it distributes less and less and less and less, okay? The price of LUNC is going down currently. Yes, it can go up, down, left, right in the future, but currently right now, if we're looking at this system right now, once it starts getting down to a certain distribution model, validators become unprofitable. We've already seen this on the blockchain with people like Duncan, who's doing the USTC repeg. He had to shut down his validator because it wasn't profitable for him to run it. This distribution model will eventually reach a, a stage where it's not profitable to run a validator and validators will simply just shut their nodes down. No nodes, no blockchain. The blockchain can't run. There's no nodes to process transactions. When you when you do any transaction, one of the 127 validators from the 130 active set, because we've only got 127 at the moment, it's going down uh, all the time. One of those handle that transaction, okay? And then bonus signers and stuff like that. But ultimately, validators run the blockchain in a sense that it's profitable them to do so. It's a symbiotic relationship and we need to better understand this symbiotic relationship that if we don't push the price of LUNC up, 
that eventually it will all become non-profitable for everybody to run and you will just simply end up with like the rich richy rich validators who can outpace everybody we've gone over this many of times so the final initiative in the month of december revolved around the announcement from terror rebels developer group that there would be no more volunteer work done on the chain the reason why i've highlighted this is because they were all part of terror rebels right They're, none of them are skin free even myself was part of terror rebels for around a month at the very beginning for them to keep kind of like speaking as if they weren't part of it, it it's irritating to say the least for myself because there were so many mistakes made by TR and it simply just split off into factions. That's why you've got Terra C Vita. That's why you've got Tobias's group and all of these other groups out there. I mean, Terra Rebels have still got a little bandwagon of people and they're still producing that work that they were paid for. So the L1 te development team utilized TGF as a vehicle for payment and updates can be seen in the initiative section. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description because it's like a 25 minute listen or a 25 minute read. But he does summarize everything and it is good to see this, right? We, we want to see what we're paying for. But like I was saying, there's so many things in here and all of these kind of like small little things that we just simply need to change because... We're going to be going over this USTC repeg uh, proposal because what people, a lot of people are unaware of <clears throat> and they just seem to get blinded is that this incorporates us forking the chain and creating another coin called Stardust. And like I was saying, it's, it's really good that all these people want to do this, but what we need is to keep it on chain. And the simple thing is, is that everybody's working to go all in different directions off of the chain because everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody wants their own castle to sit upon and not have to worry about LUNC crashing. This is what I believe it is. I believe everybody's grabbing like a life raft and then building from that life raft. The increased gas fees on Terra Classic are horrendous because you get a burn fee, then you get this gas fee. It really has messed up a lot of the smart contracts on chain. Uh, you can't run very simple smart contracts. I've spoken about this many times before. The coins that you're getting from your staking rewards, the only ones that are worth swapping is LUNC and USTC. The other ones, if you swap them, you're simply going to get charged fees for those and lose uh, around a thousand coins, depending on how much you swap. Doesn't sound like a lot, but for the average Joe trader who's maybe got one, two, three million staked and is getting very minimal rewards and is compounding that, that themselves every time it you know that that's a big hit on someone like that now going back to the loss fees from the burn tax in September 2022 we're so it's like we do everything backwards right like we're more interested in these loss fees from a burn tax in September last year than we are of actually identifying issues with station correcting them and getting a good system back in place I mean we don't even have our dashboard anymore and it's just simply not their job right because they're an l1 development team they're not being paid to do that and that's just a simple truth of it so like i was saying there's a lot to go through in here i'm not going to rabbit on too much more but they do acknowledge a lot of things in here and what's made me very happy is to see the acknowledgement of the sec and their charges against tfl and oquan the fact that they've addressed both tfl and oquan as i've stated in my previous videos and that the <clears throat> whole legality of the ecosystem as a whole, it's them saying this, me saying about life rafts, you know, it's not really looking good. But I think this is more or less just us being extra careful and maybe preparing for the worst to expect the best, right? I solely believe if we can stop people doing this dumb stuff where they take stuff off chain, seeing these dexes pop up, seeing these coins pop up that burn three five ten twenty percent and then the other eighty percent just goes off chain that's all liquidity gone and the likelihood is that liquidity came from the lunc blockchain itself it's all you know you can put two and two together with things like that you don't need to be a genius to figure that out so like i was saying there's a lot to take in on here one of the most critical initiatives that we at the TGF believe is necessary for the LUNC revival is utility. And like I'm saying, on their terms, right? On their 
terms. Folks, have a really nice morning. Links to all of this in the description. Try have a listen, try have a read. I've tried breaking this down as best as I can. Like I was saying, this does lead up to the payouts finally getting to where they need to get to in the second quarter of 2023. The system being pruned, streamlined, and then hopefully working much better on these two yearly payments. Other than that, nice to see all the different L1 upgrades. Nice to see the L1 team taking a very professional look at things. Um, as you know, with all of the different kind of things that we go over here, it's never anything personal towards any of these people. Okay. It's simply just business. It's what we talk about. It's what we do. It's our job to question things. If other people are simply just going to sit by and only report the real positive stuff for more clicks, more views, more money. We're here for real stuff, real information, and, and to look at the actual issues in hand, look at the positive things so we can make 12Xs on Binance burning when everyone else is laughing at us. Folks, like I was saying, stay safe, stay humble, stay aware, have a nice day wherever you are, and I will catch you in the next one. Shoo!